Hey guys, William Murphy here for Golf Hacker Magazine. Now today we have the opportunity of being at the European Senior Masters uh, at the Forest of Arden. This morning we joined a round table session with Ian Woosnam, Peter Baker, uh, John van der Waal and Thomas Levy. So here is the footage, I hope you guys enjoy it. Keep in tune with Golf Hacker and my YouTube and we have stuff coming all the time. Thank you guys for watching and see you soon. Uh, bonjour, je m'appelle Jean van der Ven. That's nice, thank you. Peter Baker. Ian Woosnam. Tiger Woods. <laughs> sure. Come on, Louis. <laughs> okay, th thanks, gents, for making this uh, round table today. First question to uh, Jean. Obviously, very successful Ryder Cup last week. Um, how, how did it go from a French perspective, and how did the French public um, engage with the, with the event? Well, I guess, you know, first, start with the end, uh, the French public, it was about 40% of the crowd every day. So pretty much 24,000 people, 24,000 French people came uh, through the gates from uh, basically Tuesday to Sunday, which, uh, you know, which actually uh, showed how popular golf is becoming, was I really doubt, because they came from all over the place. Uh, second of all, as, uh, as a French person, I think the Ryder Cup in France, I. I believe, you know, overall the, the thing was a success, the Ryder Cup was a success. I think he, uh, it, uh, it put the Ryder Cup itself on, the, on a different level, uh, with a different model. Uh, up to now, Ryder Cup was 45,000 people daily through the gate. Uh, we extended it to 60,000 uh, and uh, I guess, you know, the venue is just showing what can be done with the Ryder Cup. Uh, I, I do believe that should be the benchmark for the one to come. And, uh, and the popularity and, and, you know, and the attractiveness of it uh, was, was multiplied by, by whatever you want to multiply it. So, um, yeah, um, you know, it's uh, personally a great honor, and I guess for Thomas as well, because, uh, you know, not so long ago, uh, no French had won on the European Tour. Uh, we, we arrived on tour, we played, we pl were lucky enough to play Ryder Cup, and you know, having it to come in your own country, I think that's, uh, I mean, for me, that was the sherry on top of the cake, so delighted with what happened last week. And the result, obviously. Mm -hmm. oh, well, well, well said. Thank you. Yeah. I absolutely think it was a magnificent tournament, and uh, as you said, a benchmark has been done, and uh, it just showed that the, the golf course was the sort of golf course you need to host an event like that, and uh, I think what's so important when the when the Ryder Cup has gone to a, a continent, they can show how it can happen. I think that's going to, as you said, the benchmark. If Italy goes through with it, that's where they've got to raise the game a little bit. Yeah, what is important as well, we, we saw that we could improve on yeah. this one. It was a fabulous one, but we could more put more people, we really? attract more spectators, put more food, food stands, things like that. That was. Uh, it's, uh, it was a try. It's difficult on the first try when you try the first time to, to accommodate so many people yeah. to uh, to be perfect. It's uh, it's one of the things that uh, that we tried. We said okay, we could put seventy thousand, but it's a little scary because we never tried it. Yeah. So well, it's to accommodate the parking lots and all that was was uh, the, really the challenge. Not the people on course. People on course, we knew it was something. Yeah, I think that's you know the venues we're going to have is going to have to specifically. If anything, mm -hmm. it's that big design to exactly uh, to take the right. I think that's a big step. event now. Mm -hmm. it? Is, and the great thing is traveling to Europe. I think Ryder Cup. I don't know what you think, guys, but you know, it's uh, Ryder Cup is here to promote the game of golf, and we know that you know continental golf is not as developed and not as popular as it is in, in Great Britain and Ireland. So we need to use that vehicle to grow the game, to grow the awareness of the, uh, of the game around those countries and, and to make it even bigger because that's where I believe our future is well standing, as professional and as professional golf. Yeah, yeah well you're engaging with different people, like you're bringing new people into the game. And I think now when you take like, well, one of the biggest sports and events in the world uh, across different countries, it, yeah, it can only be good for the game, right. build the game. <laughs> Oh, it would have to be them too, wouldn't it? <laughs> <coughs> I'll find them both. Yeah, yeah, Thank you, Gordon. <laughs> Excuse me, Gordon. It's a fine for both of them, that way. Gents, tell me about your standouts from, from, from the week, particularly from Team Europe. 
Uh, virtue is always a continent. Mine is uh, yet to be found. I don't know where it is, to be really honest. Uh, it's, I thought there was only a bit of, uh, quite a bit of dust on it, but I, I, I realize that it's not dust that I have. It's, it's volcanic uh, ashes. Yes. <laughs> No, no form. form. No form. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what was the form? Oh, your form. Oh, right. Oh, your form. Your form. Yeah. You said right. Yeah. Form. Yeah. 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 Uh, from, from what I see, looking at you know commentating on TV, the, the turnaround was when Fleetwood uh, Molinari birdied, uh, birdied 11 and, and made that put on 11, made the put on, on 12, and and Fleetwood then felt totally you know more relaxed. I say you know he had the 10, the first 10 holes, 12 holes to find his way through, and uh, and and then he could totally explode it in the way that uh, you know he let it go, let it loose, and and he played phenomenally. I think that the peaks, you know, even if peaks are always questionable, if you, if you want to put a question, there's, there's nothing to say. You know, if you look at the single out of the four points, they brought three and a half points back. What Sergio brought in, in the team, you know, with Norin as well in the double and Stenson as well is, uh, you know, that's, uh, this has no price. So in and out, everybody was here for, for the other one. They made themselves available for the other and, and the, uh, no ego was put forward. Uh, everybody at this was at the service of the other. It was fantastic to watch. I think as a unit, isn't it really? I think as a team, I think that was the outstanding thing. I think that as a team, they got together uh, and, and all, all, all they all got a point. I believe. I think everybody got a point. Yeah. So uh, they all contributed, which is a great thing. And um, I think just you saw how much together they were at the celebrations and and before really as a group. And I think that's that's the important thing. And then I think you, you know, if you look at it, you, you realise you know you can't carry passengers, you can't carry egos. Uh, they've all got to be together. They all got to believe in the captain, the vice captains, the whole team's got to be together. And I think that's what they they showed really, really well last week. Yeah, and the leaders responded as well. Yeah. Compared to the previous Ryder Cup, where our leaders were not playing well and uh, the picks were not playing well, and then suddenly you have a big crowd. There, everybody was playing probably not their best, but they played really, really well. You know, it's, uh, so it's like the captain had choices. Where before it was like, wow, it's this guy that can't play anymore. And what do I do? And the others, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's the problem the US had. Yeah. Their leaders didn't respond. Zero points from Tiger, things like that. Yeah. You can't do a team like that. It's difficult. No, I think that's when you know we, the four people we picked. Uh, that was such important because he was trying to make the teams match, and that's when you know, obviously there was players playing very well. We could have made. The, the picks, but uh, he went with his gut feel and went with a, a team he felt was going to match together, and, and that was very important. I think what's so important with, uh, with uh, social media now, and I see the way that it finished and everything, and you know the fun what was going on social media, Twitter, uh, you know, and they even had a WhatsApp group, didn't they? And I think that's a great way of keeping coordinating as a team, we've taken a bit of fun with it. And, you know, I want to play with you, I want to play with you. And it, it makes a great atmosphere. And, and you could see they had a great atmosphere in the, in the team room. And, and that is what it's all about. So when you want to get to the Ryder Cup, you want to be ready to go. You know who you're going to play with near enough. And, you know, and the guy, just to make it as simple as possible. You know, don't overcomplicate it. Americans seem to overcomplicate it, complicate everything all the time. Very much so. Can I ask you guys, the, uh, you, you said exactly uh, what uh, everybody's been saying about the, the team room and the atmosphere and the, and the camaraderie, but there's a special source that nobody can identify because <coughs> even the Americans in the press conference afterwards were saying, well, we had great camaraderie, we do like each other, we, we did everything we thought we were going to do, and yet they were, they were completely off the game. So Europe must do something. I think he said in uh, one uh, friend John, he said one day, you know why the rabbit runs quicker than the fox? Because he's fighting for his life and the other one is fighting for, he's, he's running for food. And I see exactly what's going on in, uh, in a European team. They're always underdogs or people say they're underdogs. So suddenly the underdog goes, I'm going to show you I'm not the underdog. And they raise the level that much. And the other ones we favorite and they got like, oh, we favorite. If we lose, we're going to be idiots. 
and that's what exactly what happens. One one is raising the bar, and the other one is trying not to lower it too much. And uh, it's uh, it's really what happens. They get they get destroyed because of the the thinking that they can't they can't lose. And uh, of course you can lose. Tell me in that <coughs> table what scores we're gonna do today. If you can, you're really the king of, of golf. Nobody can tell I'm gonna beat Peter or Peter is gonna beat me. You know, nobody can tell that. At that level, the, the, the margin is too small. And people say, oh, they're favorite, they're favorite. And then suddenly they get that jacket of favorites and then they freeze, they freeze and uh, don't do it. That's really you know, Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. <coughs> but also I think what, what was done as a great job is the way the golf course was set up. Uh, a lot of work must have gone into that. You know, made the fairways really narrow and then had the ropes long way back because all of a sudden, you know, you, you've got to hit it straight. And if you hit it 10 yards wide each side, you were in the long rough. And fortunately, we've seen what happened. When you did go very wide, you went into the crowd. And you're always going to get a half decent light when you go in the crowd. But the way it was set up, I think, you know, and as Thomas says, you know, they have the pressure on, they've got to win. They feel like they're, they're, the, they're, the, they're going to win this. And, you know, the way they were, uh, their world rankings and everything. But, you know, I think it's that the European team always feels that the European tour is, you know, we've got something to prove all the time. We want to beat the old, we've got to, we've got to beat them, beat them down, and show us, show them what we've got, which we've, been, which we've been doing for the last thirty years now. Having fun, having fun. Yeah. Yeah. They're not having fun for losing. Yeah. That's for sure. They're going to lose both ways sometimes. <laughs> If yeah. you'd have been captain of the Americans and saw the, the way that they reacted, when they, even when they were winning, you know, Johnson, Dustin Johnson, even Tiger, who looked totally exhausted, there was no, there was no energy from them when they were, when they were winning all the time. So it, would that have been something you'd have, you'd have talked to them about? And uh, them a, a, a I don't know what out? was going on in that team. There was obviously something going because it just didn't look coordinated at all. They didn't look happy one little bit. I don't know why. But uh, maybe the, just their structure wasn't right, and that's why they, you know, this they say in the press or whatever they say, they say they all had a had a say in it. Well, to me, that's the wrong thing. Everybody having a say in it, because yeah, you know, so having too many cooks in the kitchen, isn't it? So you're all over the place. So yeah, I'll do this, do that. It doesn't work. So it's not when you look at successful teams in any sports, it's always a captain that decides. He has a few leaders that are usually the older guys. Usually the, cap the captain of the team in football, then and, and after that you have guys that are the base of the, the team, and then you have the, the younger kids that are following all that. And then you just write a captain, like Jan said, you, you have a captain that doesn't decide very much, and then 12 big people that are all co-captains, and this and it doesn't work. You have too many ideas, too too many things going on. In Europe, I think the rookies stay to their places. They don't they they, they follow. They give ideas sometimes, but very little, and they follow what the the, the older boys do. And, and I think that's why guys like Garcia are really important. Guys, uh, guys, you know, like Stenson are important because they they played so much and they they give a nice little advice to the other. It, it was a really strange situation. The, the four balls the first first day of the we obviously obviously lost three one, but they obviously went with the strongest team. What they felt was the strongest team. But if they were going to play everybody in the afternoon. You could see that was going to happen. If he was going to play Phil Mickles, he's going to play his rookies in foursomes, and that, to me, that yeah. was a, that yeah. was. I mean, Ping you could see it was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. 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 We had to, we had to get our rookies out first because you've got to blood them. If, got to, if he's going yeah. to play everybody, get them out, yeah, get the feeling. That's why Thomas picked the four, the uh, four goals first. And then, you he know, his rookie, put his rookies first, and then, uh, like, you see everybody's concerned. Well, like if we would have finished 2-2, it would have been happy, all right, 3-1's not the end of the world, but he knew what was going to come in the afternoon, so and you could see what happened. And then it started falling to pieces from there, really. But they, they, never, I mean, they never had anybody, really, that sort of worked as a, as a unit, you know, as a team. Probably, uh, probably the closest was probably uh, Thomas and Spieth, wasn't it? Probably the closest they looked like as a, as a team. Uh, as a team. But when, you know, the body language of you know, Tiger and Nicholson and all these people. I know, miserable. It, it just miserable. It looked like they didn't want to be there, to be honest with you. No. <coughs> you know, you can blame it. Well, you can't blame the weather, can you? But, you know, they might be too cold for them, too windy for them. And when, they, when, when that wind picked up the first in the port, they didn't know what to do. You know, it's just, they're just so out of sorts. I, I don't think I've ever seen uh, an American team uh, play like that before. Not, 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 or even put them in a putty. 
everything they did really wasn't wasn't and the, the nowhere near their standard. The knowledge of the course as well. Yeah. The stat was like five hundred and something rounds to eight in two competition rounds. Yeah. Two thirty three to eight. Two thirty three to eight. Yeah. Yeah. Something like terrible. Was I asked Jim after yeah. the the match. The first ten. question I asked him was, "Wouldn't you have insisted on?" Yeah, on the guys. And he said, well, we, we came to practice, you know, six of us the yeah, next week. Yeah, but practice and competition is... That's what is, I said. <laughs> it's like the corridor without the bull, you know. I can do that you know, all day long. And when the bull comes in, I'm the first one running out. And it's Justin exactly was the, the only person to come and play, and he scored four points. Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. it's not brain surgery to think that another couple of guys <coughs> who played, they needed a, another couple of Oh yeah, that's for sure. I mean, they, I mean, the strength, one of the strengths they have is, is their power, and the power does not come into... It's useful, but that's not the number one criteria on the, on the national. And I even heard a comment yesterday of uh, one of the American play, players said, well, the venue was too short. I mean, what does that mean, a golf course that is too short? You know, if you hit a, a two iron when the other one is hitting a driver, I guess you have an advantage in hitting a two iron. It's easier to hit off the tee. I can, uh, well, that's what I think anyway, so it's easier to find the fairway. Therefore, you know, no, they, they didn't know the national you need to have played it many, many, many times to go around and to know where to miss the golf ball, and and more so when the fair, when the rocks are like that, because if not, you you're not going to be able to to compete at all. And you know, coming back to the point of the unity of the European Tour, I think our, our difference is the fact that we're many nationality. You know, although we're neighbours, we we're culturally different, and and I think that's what makes our strengths as well. Because as I say, you know. You're more open to the other one. You you try to understand him. You try to help him, and 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 that that kind of difference becomes your your strengths, uh, and and you know it's it's a melting pot of different of different culture that joins together for the same goal, uh, and therefore I think we're closer to that to that extent. Mm. Well, I mean, they don't no, I agree. I agree. You know, you've got an Englishman and an Italian. Can you believe that? Just joining together, just yeah. fantastic, wasn't it? Best pals, yeah. <laughs> 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 you don't know that. <laughs> well, that was an amazing video. What did he give me four out of four? I'll give you five. Yeah. 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 Well, but all brilliant. that stuff is brilliant, isn't it? It is. You know, they sort of embrace it and uh, they make a bit of fun of it and, and go with it. It's true. It's great for golf, it gets it's out golf yeah. anyway. Just gets out there into the public. <laughs> Can imagine being, what are you giving me? Nothing. Exactly. What do you mean? Nothing. You're the last year. Yeah, I should tell you in that bed. Feel. Careful. Watch out. How many did you get, Phil? <laughs> what do you get, Tiger? How about that? No. Yeah. Yeah. You open? Yeah. That was, that was, was uh, yeah. No, I, feel, I feel sorry for the piece. Yeah. American piece. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think what was nice is that Tiger put his hands up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Cool. that's great. You know, he's like, yeah. The piece, American piece. So like two points, two and a half from Fino, right? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Tiger, Michelson, Deshaun, zero, zero, and Fino, two yeah. and a half. Last guy in. But what a finish, you know, with. Alex. As Alex, that was <laughs> going and it was just so sort of rubbed in it, yeah. and it was just unbelievable. And Doshambo was getting yeah, well done. Yeah, he had a great shot, didn't he? He had a great shot. What's going on? Great right shot. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the amazing things that I think about a Ryder Cup is seeing that many people going crazy and then they all go quiet. Maybe you guys could share what it's like to be in that, in that, uh, in that moment when a large crowd you know, becomes dead silent and maybe any interesting stories of nerves pre-round at the rest. It's actually disturbing. I think it's very, everybody's <laughs> nervous on the first tee, but I think what is the beauty about golf is how it can be that noisy and all of a sudden it can go to, to nothing and that's just the respect golfers have. You don't really get that in anything else. I was a bit worried that some guys might shout out who were there just for the, for the sake of being at the Ryder Cup and it never happened and it was a magnificent first day, great atmosphere, everybody's, you know, the first hole is the first hole, if you can get through that and win the hole it is, I think you've seen the stats on that, if you can win the first hole you're almost, you win the tournament, it's really weird. Yeah. It's, yeah. So the noise thing's good, I mean, we got a lot of noise, it's, you're okay, it's when it goes quiet then you get a, a click of a camera or something or whatever a phone goes off that sort of frightens the life out of you it's like somebody's mm -hmm. with a shotgun by your ear you know it's, it's amazing when there's, when there's a lot of noise it doesn't yeah. just get on with it you're used noise. to it really. consistent noise on the back of that what are your thoughts of the of the booing for the american players 
Yeah, well, I think it, it, nobody wants to see that. I, I think 99% of the crowd would, would be perfect, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You've always get some. You got how many people around that? Yeah, I don't know. You got but yeah, you have to be careful as well that there are some of them because of the, sp the players themselves. Yeah, the Matt Kutcher was in the crowd, so people were not booing him. They were showing Cooch as well. Same with Luke Donald. Mm -hmm. So it was sometimes mistake mistaken for for that. But uh, they were they were uh, for Patrick Reed was the one that was not really welcome. But uh, and that the rest I didn't I didn't hear that. No, you would you would never yeah, avoid you know fan to be partisan. Yeah. Uh, but as Woozy said, you know, there's, there's a, an, an immense amount of respect uh, and de definitely on this side of the pond. You know, I, I've never seen it going, uh, you know, over the, over the top, ever. Of no. course, you're going to have a bit of booing, a bit of, you know, hey, you know, I told you not to come, he was going to trash you. Well, it is, uh, I, I was, you know, I mean, fortunate or unfortunate only to play in one, but that was in America. <laughs> yeah, it's a different story. Let me assure you, what I experienced there was uh, was something different, yeah, way that, different. Yeah, that was shocking. Yeah. I remember watching that on the TV. It was horrible. So I, I you know, I think no matter what, it went extremely well. I, I, I friends sent me a few videos when they were around the 14th green, and you could see, you know, that. American player is, is about to walk in the bunker and, and the noise and they're chanting for the European and all of a sudden he's walking to the ball. <sighs> nothing. But I mean nothing. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, you could hear the bird sing basically. And I was like, wow. Uh, so I guess, you know, that's that's what you want. That's what you want. The rest, <laughs> you, you want noise, you want, you want craziness. Uh, that's yeah, what it's about. You can make as much noise but have respect for the players. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that is brilliant. I think that's what the game's all about. Mm -hmm. I know you can ask uh, Tiger if he remembers the reception he had at the opening ceremony. I don't think he ever had one like mm. that ever. Standing ovation. Standing ovation. Everybody stood up. He was, he was uh, almost in tears at the time. And, uh, he never had one like that. And, uh, so it meant a lot to him. And uh, it, it felt, you know, the American Jim Furyk, I saw Jim after that, and he said, we felt really welcome here. And, uh, and uh, they understood the, 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 the cheering and uh, the booing and all these things. They know it. The other side of the pond is very different for for, for us, so it's, uh, they understand it is kind of the game for the Can we talk a bit about the team room? Um, I mean, John, Peter, Thomas, not allowed. No comment. No, stays in the locker. Stays in the but locker. just your because when you were you were you came all three as rookies in '93, '99, and 2004. Yeah. Do you remember what you thought of the team when you worked in? <laughs> uh, that, was it something you expected? What, 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 did anything surprise you? Because uh, 93, go back Yeah, to I mean, I, when I walked into the team room, I saw uh, Seve, uh, Langer, Faldo, Wuzzy, Alatha Bal. Uh, I thought we must have a chance. <laughs> um, so that was good walking into that team room, yeah. But the atmosphere, the, the, the things around you, what was what was what made it special? What the, most, it the most outstanding thing for me what, in in the team room when we had our first team meeting was that uh, obviously full of confidence. You rookie going there, we are full of confidence. You won tournaments, you're bulletproof. That's it, as good as anybody. All that stuff, what you're thinking, and then you walk in there and you sit down in the team room and uh, you've got these guys and they're talking everything. And I, to this day, I couldn't believe how badly they wanted to beat the Americans, and it sort of blew me away. That I thought, well, I'm I'm a winner. I want to win, but they were absolutely desperate to beat the Americans because I think you know, particularly going back to '93 and before that, you know, they had a lot to prove. They felt a bit um, not recognised as much. The world ranking points wasn't the same, so on and so forth. So they they felt uh, uh, that they'd really got to prove themselves, and I couldn't believe how much they wanted to win. And I. And I and I think that probably still runs today that they still want to prove they want to win, they want to prove themselves. And that was the most amazing thing for me. I thought, gosh, you know, that was just incredible. The will to do it was just, just amazing. That sort of blew me away. John? Yeah, well, you know, when you, when you arrive there, as Peter said, you feel full of confidence. You say, yeah, you know, I, I had my spot, and, and here you are. And then, and then you walk in, and, and you see all those guys who have so many caps, and, and they start talking, and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to listen a little bit, which, you know. I often listen, but I often open my mouth as well. But I, I, I you kind of be very, quite of kind of quiet and 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 listen to the to the wisdom and, and the guidance. And and you always remember. Well, I felt, and I wasn't the only one that, you know, you you hear despite you're playing or you're not playing, you you here to serve the team. You you here to you know bring the best spirit you can bring. You here to support your your peers, your friends, your the, the other players, and and 
you know, if if helping them is being on the side and, and cheering and being next to them and, and you know, and, and whoever you're very close to, uh, following him and, and, and making sure that everything goes well, that, that's what it's about. So, you know, whatever your role is going to be, you know, you're, you're adding you're adding your part to the team no matter what. And uh, and to me, that was, you know, that's, that's something that you don't, you, you never feel. I mean, the Ryder Cup is the only place where you feel that. And, and I have to say, playing in America, especially in 99, it was super our style. I mean, you know, 93 made his damage, 97 as well. The American crowd, uh, uh, journalists say, you know, there's one thing that they cannot stand is, is being, is being pushed and, and, and teased in, in what they think they should dominate. Uh, and, and not so much the players, the players understand, you know, it, the Ryder Cup is not on the paper. You're favorite, we're not favorite, okay, I give it to you, you give it to me. No, you have to play out there. But, but sometimes, you know, some of the you guys, I mean, I'm not pointing out and not blaming you, but you, you can build it so much that it actually goes overboard. And it doesn't go overboard with the players, but right? but it does with the fans that are coming, and and that to that extent is was uh, yeah it was it was an eye opener. Thomas Bernard was your captain. So yeah, what, what, did, what did he actually do physically to the room, the team room, to make it something that he you himself? You know, when uh, he was himself, and uh, when you look at Bernard play, mm -hmm. when he's like he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's everything was uh, looked like it was. It was coming naturally to him, and uh, he made us feel all confident the way he is on the golf course, and uh, or he behaves, you know. And uh, it, that Friday Cup went like like a walk in the park because of his behavior, and then the learning experience from older older guys that done it before. They make you feel welcome in the team, and then you realize that the doubts you have, they have it as well. They're nervous, you know. It's important when you have a guy like Monty telling you that. On the first tee, he'll be nervous. So like this, you don't feel like an idiot. You know, like uh, I'm not the only one being like that, or I'm not the only one that is like walking about this high because it's the Ryder Cup week. And uh, things like you know, uh, and the messages we receive as well before the tournament. That I was very impressed by that. You know, you you're in the team room and then messages are flying in. You know, and the guys like Uzi right there in peace, uh, Sandy Lyle, Sevi, uh, Jose Maria, guys like. We all respect, and uh, and uh, I watched Ian when he doesn't know, but I was following him when I was a kid, you know, in the London <laughs> Trophy or in La Boulie. Are <laughs> you there? Yeah. He yeah. <laughs> was, and then yeah. you, you, you <laughs> follow these guys, and suddenly <laughs> you have a chance to, to be next to them. And, uh, I hope you guys see me there. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I do as well. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, you, you, you suddenly, uh, suddenly, you. You feel welcome in the team and uh, you raise your level by that much because they make you confident. Ian, how much time did you spend when you were captain in 2006 planning that team room? Too much. <laughs> Too much. What was going to happen and from the meetings and all the, the schedule? How much time did you spend? From the very day I was made captain, I worked on it, worked on it. Straight away I started putting teams together, pairings together, my speech together for, for two years. Uh, it was something I wanted to get completely right, and well, did get it right. Uh, but you know, it was, it's, uh, it's about having right people around you and doing everything correct. Like you know, when when you get in that when you get in that locker room with all the guys, they want to make them feel comfortable and enjoy it. And the message was to go out and enjoy it. You know, one of the examples was it was really rainy and we couldn't really go out and play, but. It, I sent the guys out. I said, "Let's go to the let's go to the range and send, some, you know, hit a few balls and sign some photographs." Next thing, they're out in the range signing photographs, to signing, and then the next thing they want to play. Of course, it, it, it all became one big spirit, and a, you know, you have to say having the right people talking to the young guys, telling them what it's going to be like and who you're going to be playing with. And, and Peter came up after I did the draw on the first day. Uh, and again, we're on the course, and Pete says, well, the guys are not feeling too comfortable. Are they going to play in the afternoon? So I went straight <coughs> down and said, right, you're all playing in the afternoon. And like, it changed the ball ballpark again. They were so happy they are going to play in the afternoon. Next thing I get, who were I playing with? Well, 
give me a chance, you're playing, all right? <laughs> so, you know, but it was a great week. Everybody was happy. We had, mo we had a lot happy and we had a lot of emotion, what was going on. And, uh, yeah. You didn't plan that? No, I didn't plan that. <laughs> but, uh, Make us all cry on the first tee box? Tell yeah, you. yeah, that was... That was a good moment there. Yeah. It was unbelievable when you're on that first tee and they're all banging their feet and I thought, oh, God, I, you know, you're all welling up and... Yeah, we used that emotion. I know it was bad because we wanted to do something for Darren Clark, and it was fantastic there at the end. Nearly got it right with him winning it. Yeah. What was the one thing as captain you did, do you think, that none of the other captains have done? What, what, what was the, the, the Ian Woosman special sauce that, that you added, do you think, in your... On every session. <laughs> no, no, in terms of the preparation. Uh, I think it was just being myself. We're all different kind of captains. Bernard Lang would be different than me. He'd be more regimental. He would have it. I mean, mine was more and more excitable. I'd be more like a semi. You know, but I also wanted to be calm at the same time. But being completely organised, what we were doing, you know, letting the players do what they want to do, naturally not telling them what to do. And I think that's what Thomas had in his, in his, in, in his captaincy. He just let them do whatever they wanted. They're professionals. They do everything the same every week. They hit the balls. You know, you can't tell them well. You go to bed early, you're doing this, you're doing that. You know, you just, you know, they're professionals. Yeah, make it, make it exciting for That's them. what the Americans don't do with Tiger. Yeah. Do you think like, Tiger in the tournament, in the long tournament, you don't see him after 1.30 in the afternoon? He's gone. Do you and think there at Radha Cup, he's on the ninth green, seeing so many autographs. He's not himself for it. Do you think if Tiger played in the European team, he'd score more points? A lot more. A lot more. He'll have a chance of doing that, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he might not make the team. You don't know. Uh -huh. I think the thing, the thing that the K club as well, I think uh, Aim was the first captain that put everybody out in Europe the first day. So everybody played the first day and I think... I think no, Bernard did. Bernard did. Yeah. Bernard did. And he, he I think the stuff he learned from, from playing all them Ryder Cups, that's, that's, that's the big thing. I think you really learn it along the way, don't you? Yeah, you know, I the, think... The picks were good, you know, Westwood, when Westwood, went, Westwood was probably not playing as well as he had done. But well, yeah, he played fantastic and of course he went on world number one. Darren. All that emotion, then he went on to win the Open, you know, so on and so yeah, forth. So, so, they, were, they were a great team together, if you remember. They were a good pairing. They had been in previous Ryder Cups, didn't they? So you picked them. What was best for your team at the time? Yeah, and I think that's what the beauty about it is with the guys who have been in the Ryder Cup, and if they ever become captain or they become vice captains, they've all been in that situation to give that advice to help make the teams in the future, and I think that's what's great as well. Uh, Thomas and, and uh, You've had a really sort of easy road to come in. It was a it was a good win. 2006 was, was good for Ian, but what happens when it's not good and you come back and you are three one down like they were on Friday this time? What does a captain say? What, what have you heard when that happens? I mean, you can't just say go out and play better, guys. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what does the captain do? What, what have you heard? What is your experience of when things didn't go right in a session? I mean, one of the sessions we lost three uh, one. Uh, we were about to lose 3-1 and then Paul Casey and uh, Luke Dummer or David Owl came back uh, and uh, won instead of losing and we lost only two and, 12, two and a half to one and a half, which was very important and, uh, and um, it's just, uh, yeah, players were telling themselves, look, it's not that far back, you know, lost only one up and it's a, it's a question of, you know, sometimes not very lucky at the right time and the difference in those games is so small that you never you know, tell your guys not, not to let go it's not because you lost one, you're going to lose every other game. And uh, just uh, keep playing the way you are and be confident in what you do and it's going to turn. Over three days, it's gonna, the waves are going to you know, go like this. So it's not going to... We knew from the start, guys like uh, Monty, Bernard, um, Lee Westwood told us, in Ryder Cup, it goes you know, in waves. You're going to be up, you're going to be down, and don't look at the words. They don't tell the truth. The truth is at the end of the, of the day, not yeah. you know, during the match. It's where you are Sunday night, eh? 5 o'clock mm -hmm. Sunday night. You've got those <coughs> on the back points. of that slide, guys, how much difference does the caddies make? Because obviously it's completely different for them as well. Because obviously normally in a tournament, then it's just you and them, and you're playing your own ball. So how much difference in that environment do the caddies make, and what work do they put in? I think at this time at the Radica, pretty much everybody has a good caddy on the bag, and a guy that knows what he's, he's doing and. Uh, and doesn't cost you anything in the Ryder Cup. But does they get sucked up into the atmosphere as well? Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah, really of course. They're part of the team as well, you know. Yeah, they're right in there. They're a part of the team. Yeah. You know, it's, it's 12 players and 12 caddies. But it's not just 12 players and 12 caddies. It's also a massive team together. And then you, 
you don't realize how, well, I don't know how much you realize how much actually goes into the captaincy and preparing a golf course clothing, or, you know, especially being at home. It's unbelievable how much work you have to do to get it correct. And then when you go to America, it's a little different because they're doing it. But there is a lot and a lot of things that you want to make. I put trees in corners because at this time they were hitting the ball further than that. So I thought, well, I'll put some trees here to stop them going over corners. But narrowing the rough in the 300 yards. You know, what Sevi did in Balderrama. Yeah, he was yeah. the first one to say, okay, let's go. They can reach that par five, we cannot. Let's put rough in the middle so they won't you know, be able to hit it. I, I think, I mean, I've never been in the role of a captain. Maybe Woozy can confirm that, or vice captain. But the, the biggest thing you want to do is to make sure that you build the spirit of your 12 guys come Sunday. Because Sunday you're going to be on your own. There's nobody to tap on your shoulders. There's no partner to guide you to, you know. You look at the images of, uh, uh, of Sergio taking Noren in the first five all of that, uh, of that double. On the, on, although they lost on Saturday. But you could see he was really comforting him. He was really telling him, listen, it's, it's okay. You know, just, it's going to come. It's, it's just calm down. Just, just play your game. Just feel free. And, uh, and you, you want to try to build that, no matter what the result is, because that you know that Sunday, you, you throw 12 guys out there and you play for 12 points. So it's not rocket science to say that that day is vital in terms of the result of the Ryder Cup. And if you manage to do that, then I think you, you can come up and you can overcome mountain. You know, we, we've seen the miracle of Manina, the miracle of whatever, Brookline, this, this, you know, there's, there's a reason to that, you know, despite time, it's because whatever. Everybody is into that spirit where they know that the next day they're going to go out and they're going to jump on the throat of this other guy and, and they're going to take the best out of it. I, I think that's, you know, that's my view of it. So Make sure that those 12 guys are fit and ready for Sunday. Talking captaincy, looking ahead to Western Straits, two years' time, who would you like to see as European, <laughs> Europe's Ryder Cup captain? Start yeah. with you, Jean. I think that one to you. I think I think in my sat there now. I think I think Harrington's pretty nailed on. I think I think you know nobody's going to be shocked when he gets announced. I'd be, be surprised if it's any different to that. Yeah, I think it's the same thing. He's the uh, he's the next the oldest <coughs> guy in line for it. I think uh, had the experience and uh, yeah, he's the main man. And who do you think the states will go for? Thomas, tell us that one. <laughs> I don't. Maybe. Uh, Matt Kutcher or something like that. Uh, David, David Maybe Stricker. Stricker. Yeah. Steve. Steve might go. Uh, let's see who they put in the Presidents' Cup. Usually he goes. He goes next. Yeah. Okay. Given obviously, was he? You did so well um, with that record um, points margin back in 2006. Do you think there'll ever be a time where, much like Tony Jack and Bernard Gallagher, will get a uh, captain come back and do it for a second time? No. Uh, I think there's a rule being made that. Once you're over 50, you can't take the captaincy. So, really? It's true, yeah, so. Since when? Uh, from <laughs> that's uh, good information. <laughs> from 2008. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, so, so. over 50. Yeah. It's it's too, if you think it's too many, it's too many huge captains for too, many, too <laughs> less <laughs> tournaments. I don't have to think about it. There's, there's a lot of guys. There's going to be some guys that are going to be sad. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I agree with you, but uh, you know, not everybody is, is fitted to no, be no. captain. And, and at the end of the day, I think you need to bring out the, the best guy for the job. I, what I think is important is that you still need to be in touch with your players. Yeah. You need to Definitely. be there on a daily basis. Week in, week out, you need to play with them, you need to chat with them, you need to know how they think, what they do, what they like, they what they don't like, and, and bringing somebody that has been out of touch for 10 years, you know, and this is great, work. great example of four years ago, you're like, uh, I, I don't think so. You're relevant all the, all the respect you have for them. Uh, so, yeah, somebody that is in touch, has it got to be under 50, or, you know, if, if you have a guy like, like Boozy who's... Uh, you know, he's done everything in golf and he's 52 and he's playing on tour on a daily basis, why not him? I think that's, that's, a, that's a bit reductive, but, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of guys online for sure, uh, or in line, and some of them will be better in America, some of them will be better in Europe as well, that's a, that's a big call. Uh, and therefore, but having another one, having a guy like Uzi coming back, if he was to play, and you know, why not? Why not? I think mean, a guy like uh, Jose coming back, why not? Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a matter of, is it the best guy suited for the job? That's what I believe. Yeah, that's true. 
uh, you know, you I just say, you've got to be in touch. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Yeah, well, you I have to be there. You've got to be with the guys. Yeah. I didn't really get into it much then when I'd been asking questions and everything. When I, you know, I, I just didn't know that Leo's good enough to, to answer some of the questions, really. And, uh, so if you're going to get into it, you've got to be really on the ball, be there, be at the tournaments, get to know the guys. Uh, so it's very important. Even if you're, you know, if I was asked to be a vice captain, you know, I'd have to spend a lot of time being with these guys because it's important. Do you think Sandy would have made a good uh, captain? Yeah, I think Sandy would have been fine and uh, just didn't have the opportunity to do it, which is a, a big shame because, you know, been one of the greatest players in the world, you know, Open champion, Masters champion. Sa Sandy with the right team around him would have made a great captain, I believe. Yeah. I think it was unthinkable to consider him or even give him the chance. That's what I think, you know. And I, I remember being at a tournament committee and I said, well, guys, I mean, okay, who, who are we going to consider? And I, and I and I threw his name at him. And that, I can tell you, I threw his name and I said, well, what are the criteria to be a Ryder Cup captain? Do you have to be number one in the world one day? Well, he's been. You have to be a major champion? He's been. You have to win the other man, whatever. You have to have successes? He has. You have to yeah, have experience in yeah. the Ryder Cup? Yeah, I think he has. So, what, you know, what is it? So therefore, you know, that opened a debate, and, and I'm not going to go through that. It's, it's a bit of a locker room, but, uh, but at the end of the day, yes, I, I, I do believe that not only he would have made a fine captain, although he's very, it can be very quiet at times, but it's okay being very quiet when there's a zillion people around. It doesn't mean that he's very quiet when we're around at the table having dinner. Uh, would he have made a great captain? I, I believe yes. Uh, and did he deserve to be a captain? I, I do believe he did as well, without any doubt. Okay. Okay, thank you. 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 Th